open up a new RX project. Set the uh, target address, which is the main address of the uh, processor's programming port. Go ahead and configure the project for the correct rack processor uh, that you're using. In this case, this processor has a regular Ethernet port for programming and other Ethernet connections and it also has a built-in uh, Profinet port so you have to set the Profinet ports to Profinet otherwise they're just Ethernet ports Then you need to set the addresses On your Profinet, make sure you set up the uh, Profinet addresses that are on a slightly different subnet than the main Ethernet uh, port. Um, it's just a requirement of the of the uh, processor. Uh, it's actually a pretty standard requirement. Even Siemens uh, always wants you to set those as a different uh, subnet. I guess so that it's hard to get confused. When you, if you use one switch, you can give your Profinet uh, ports uh, a unique Profinet name, or just use the default one. It doesn't really matter. Uh, one of the things I got to do for the drive is, of course, the uh, GSD files are not um, included in the. GE software because this is going to be a Siemens drive uh, so I had to go download the Siemens drivers uh, there's various versions uh, so I think this first yeah, attempt I picked the wrong version but you just go pick the the right version and that will these files uh, give all the definitions of how the Profinet uh, drive can uh, be configured Every Profi uh, net device from different manufacturers are different, so you do have to kind of understand how the uh, Profi net driver works for that particular uh, device. Because I've done this with the Siemens PLC, so I understand, you know, how the the driver needs to get configured. Uh, so I pick the the driver for the the control unit I'm using. Um, which, of course, I know what it is, and it happens to be the standalone CU310. But then you gotta then go ahead and say, now I have the drive. Uh, what kind of word exchange can I get? So, uh, like a lot of these Siemens system drives, they have the base control unit, and then they have the the actual vector or servo portion of the of the drive, so you put those two basic uh, ports in, and then for each one of those, then I, you go in and pick how many words you want to exchange back and forth. Um, in the Siemens drives, the uh, 
the way it exchanges data is through uh, integer words. Some drives you actually have to pick bits and then some words and so again you kind of have to be familiar with whatever it is you're trying to use or get an example program if it's a device you've never used on anyone's processor. So now that I got the words selected, uh, these are because these are all integer words. They'll show up as AIs and AQs uh, in the main uh, memory of the processor itself. Um, so that's going to be pretty easy to handle. Uh, you got to make sure that uh, you've given the uh, the drive a, a Profinet name. Uh, whoops, I didn't pick a valid one. Um, so that uh, it has both the address and the name of the uh, the drive, they, and they have to match. And it has to be 100%. The name and the address has to be exactly what you set in the drive. And you got to remember, you got to set the same thing in the drive itself, because this is just in the PLC program, or they won't connect. And then you can ask it, you know, where the where the information is going to show up, um, and you can actually change that around. But the default's normally fine, unless you you got some other uh, areas that you want to leave free and want to move this into a different uh, image memory area. But those are the areas that uh, the data is going to show up in, and that you're going to transmit. Uh, with the Siemens drive, you got to always remember for the drive itself, you got to send uh, bit 10 and uh, in the control word, which is the first word of the drive. Uh, this is a kind of legacy thing. It just tells the uh, drive that the PLC wants to have control. Um, and basically the drive won't send or receive data at all until bit 10 gets set. So before you think you're going to see anything going back and forth, you got to have bit 10 set. So it's just like when you're doing it with the Siemens PLC, it's the first thing that you really need to make sure you set in your program. Um, a good thing here is that uh, the on Profinet, the uh, high byte, low byte, uh, goes through the uh, same order, so it shows up as high byte first in the drive, uh, so bit 10 shows up as bit 10 in the drive. Now that's not the case with the Rockwell, because um, it's, you know, low byte uh, first in the Rockwell processors, uh, as several others, so you, you got to kind of know which, which way the bytes are going to come through. Uh, to make sure you're actually setting bit 10 in the drive itself. And if you look in the drive, you'll actually see bit 10 go high, uh, you know, once you uh, download the whole program, including hardware. 